Hey, what's up guys? The newest flagships from Sony and Samsung both share a special feature, super slow-mo video recording at 960 FPS. Both manufacturers do it a bit differently though, so we're gonna do a little comparison. I'm Will for GSM Arena, and this is our super slow-mo video shootout. So first off, let's get into the slow motion mode. This is slightly easier on the Samsung interface. Just swipe to get to slow-mo and press record. On Sony's Xperia, the button for slow-mo is found within the video mode, so it takes one extra step. Now let's look at the resolution. Both the Samsung and the Sony phones can record at 720p. Looking at the chart, the resolution is pretty comparable. Smaller details get lost. As of this year, Sony's XC2s can also record at 1080p. You can see a lot finer detail here. One difference between them all is the amount of cropping. Of course, the 720 on the Samsung has a tighter crop than Sony's 1080p, but look at the difference between the 720p on the two phones. Here's how they perform in an actual slow-mo scene. You can clearly see the difference in the level of detail with Sony's 1080p. The higher resolution has a drawback though. Here the slow-mo recording and playback length is cut in half. The RAM buffer only has a certain amount of space. This makes it hard to catch the right moment, especially since Sony's recording is manual only. Be prepared for a few missed attempts. On the other hand, besides a manual option, the S9 and S9 Plus also have automatic capture, which starts the slow-mo when something moves within a certain area of the screen. This is pretty handy when you're trying to catch something moving quickly into the frame, instead of relying on luck and quick reflexes. But if there are multiple things moving, it's still better to stick to manual. The S9's manual mode also lets you control the focus by tapping on the screen. This isn't possible in auto capture mode. On the XE2, if you want to change the focus, you need to back out into normal video mode, tap on the screen, and then go back into slow-mo. A major difference is that after recording, Samsung has plenty of editing options available. You can go directly to an editor with a timeline, where you can clearly see which sections are at normal speed and which are in slow-mo. You can trim the video on the timeline, and even choose to disable slow motion sections individually leaving the ones which you like. There's also a selection of background music to choose from. And once you're done, it's easy to share your creation with friends straight from here. Sony, on the other hand, doesn't have a lot to offer. Although there is a basic video editor accessible through the gallery, it isn't tailored towards slow motion at all. You'll have to hunt through by hand to find the slow-mo parts. One thing that makes recording slow-mo tricky is that with the fast shutter speed, you need plenty of light to get a decent exposure. In less than ideal conditions, the ISO goes up and everything starts to look grainy. Noise is even pretty apparent with normal indoor lighting. Let's use this scene in the studio to compare low light performance. Here we've cranked up the lights to the max and things look okay. As we turn the lights down, Samsung's picture is slightly less noisy than Sony's 720p thanks to its brighter aperture which can collect almost twice as much light. Of course, the 1080p still has more detail and looks better. But as it gets even darker, Samsung's noise reduction is able to maintain a usable, yet smudged picture, while Sony's is overrun with noise at both resolutions. Regardless of how they do in the dark though, on a nice sunny day all of these phones can take some pretty awesome shots. Overall, both Samsung and Sony do a good job with their super slow-mo videos. 
but as far as which is implemented better, I think we had to hand it to Samsung, even though Sony did pioneer the feature. To take great super slow-mo, you need some good setup and the right conditions. But Samsung has made it a bit easier thanks to automatic capture. Plus, there is a whole editing suite for slow-mos, which Sony doesn't offer. In any case, we're sure that super slow-mo is only going to get better, and even other manufacturers like Huawei are starting to jump on board. We'll have to see what the future brings as the competition heats up. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.